Okay, best friends, so coming in at number one, 10 items in your home that will invite demonic witchcraft on your life without you even knowing it. Number one is so important. I don't care how much these things mean to you, get rid of it. And that is things your ex best friend or your ex gave you. I don't care if it was a Chanel bag. I don't care if it was your favorite watch. Get rid of it. Why, big sis? Why would I get rid of it? Like, I, I don't care about them, but I like the gift. This is why it's going to invite demonic presence in your life, right? Because when you look at the item, right? Let's say this is like a watch your friend gave you, right? Well, every time you put that watch on, you love it, but you can't help to think about where it's from. It's like, okay, I'm wearing this watch. Oh, my ex gave it to me. And every time you think of that ex, you're going to be like, oh, I remember, you know, while we broke up, he cheated on me. He treated me bad. He was such a narcissist. Oh, I can't stand him, but I love this watch. And then you walking around the whole day full of anger, sadness, and you don't even know why because you have this demon attached. I'm not saying that the person is a demon. I'm not saying that your best friend was a demon, no matter what they did, okay? I'm not saying the person is a demon because as, a ch as children of God, we are not to judge anyone. If someone, if someone wronged you, best believe God will play by his children and he will get them back for what they did. But in the meantime, your job as a Christian, number one, remove it. If Every time you look at that watch and it, you, you feel all these feelings, you have to throw it away. You know why? Because... Is going to bring the spirit of forgiveness. And if you read the scripture, God says this all the time. Forgive people for your sins. Forgive people who trespass against you. Because if you don't, I'm going to measure you with the same unforgiveness. And you're going to lose your salvation. For those of you who, who who's kind of confused, like, what do you mean lose my salvation? I mean, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. You're not going to see the, 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 the heavenly gates. I don't care how much you love God. You praise God. If you have uh, um, hatred in your heart, bitter, bitterness in your heart for anybody that wrongs you, it's going to hinder your prayers. God is not even going to hear your prayers. I don't even know how God even blessed me because when I tell y'all I have so much bitterness and hatred in my heart for people that wrong me, but in my journey and watching sermons and I keep, every time I go on TikTok, I keep seeing the same verses of forgiveness that's the way, that's how God communicates with us. For those of you who do not know, if you go on, on social media, you constantly see this, people talking about the same biblical scripture, that's God speaking to you. And I kept seeing things about forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness. And if you don't forgive, you know, you, you're going to walk around hurt. So I said, you know what? Let me just forgive everybody that hurt me. And once I started walking into forgiveness, when I tell you everything in my life starts changing for the better, I feel happy. I don't feel angry. If you watch my older videos, when I used to talk about friends or when I talk about my old relationships, when I would explain what my friends and old relationships used to do, if you notice in those videos, I was very angry. Like, number one, if your friend does this, throw that chick away because she's fake as hell. I had a friend that did it. Like, my energy was so dark. And I didn't even realize it. Mind you, I'm a really sweet person, but I let what people do, do to me change me completely. So to prevent yourself from operating your life in the spirit of anger and bitterness and sadness and taking it out on everybody... Start by removing everything, every item in your household belonging to people that hurt you. And before you throw away that watch or whatever your friend gave you, pray for them. God, I still have hatred in my heart for this person that gave me this. I ask that you bless them. I ask that you, you know what I'm saying, um, I ask that you remove the hatred and bitterness I have for them so that I can serve you better and that I can live a better life in the name of Jesus. And then you throw it away and watch how, watch how better, how, watch how much better you feel. Okay, let's move on to number two, 10 items in your home that will invite demonic witchcraft in your life. Number two, this is actually number two to number to number six. I know I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for this, but you know what? I got to I got to say it. I got to say it because I thought there was nothing wrong with these things, too, at one point. And I'm going to tell you why it's so wrong and that you are bringing witchcraft in your life. And that is get rid of incense sage, those evil eye bracelets, anything that will chase away demons or protect you is demonic and it's blind witchcraft. The reason why it's, it's um, witchcraft is because, right, I want you to understand as a Christian, and I want you to really hold on to the words that I'm saying, really, really understand this. Ladies, I want you to understand 
all you need for protection, for money, for an increase of money and abundance in your life, all you need to do is go to the source. Not no crystal, not no evil eye braces. It's not going to protect what's in your heart, okay? Let, 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 me, let me paint the picture for you. You know, for all my 90s babies, you remember that movie Space Jam? And Michael Jordan gave every one of, um, every one of his teammates, you know, that they didn't know how to play basketball. He gave them water. He put water in a bottle and said that this is magic juice. And they drunk it. And after they drunk it, they're like, woo, I feel it. And then they started playing basketball really good and they won. And then later on, Michael Jordan revealed that it was just water and that, you know, they, they did it. They, they did it, um, pretty much. Okay. Pretty much, it was water the whole time. So you might be thinking like, okay, I bought this sage and now I feel protected. Now I feel that's your own mind tricking you, okay? If you want to feel that 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 burden of, uh, not burden, but if you want to feel that protection and you want to walk every day and feel like you, you're just covered and all of that, all you have to do is get closer to God, okay? If you need, okay, also, let me tell you why this is also demonic and witchcraft. It's telling God that if you need those things, if you need those things, incense, sage, and all of that to protect you, it's telling God that you don't trust him enough to protect and take care of you. The only person that's protecting me right now, the only person that's allowing me to wake up and, and, and move comfortably and do all of this stuff, it's by the, it's by the glory of God. I notice any time, you guys, I stop reading my scriptures, I stop watching sermons, I just stop putting God first in my life, I stop praying as much, that's when a whole bunch of evilness come to me. I feel like whoever put witchcraft on me, they put witchcraft on me at the perfect time. Witchcraft was able to take over me in my life, right, for months at a time because I wasn't close to the source. But had I been close to God, that that wouldn't all those months where I was feeling like uh like a, a there was a sleep paralysis on my life where I couldn't even get up and film videos for you guys and I didn't know what I, what, what happened to me all of that could have been prevented if I just was on fire for God fire for Jesus this is not a game this is a lifelong thing God God you don't understand you could get saved right you could get saved you could love God but if you don't live a prayerful life. Because I'm telling you, it says it in the scripture, the devil comes to seek and devour. So you got to be on point because you don't know who's trying to curse your life. You don't know if you have an ex-boyfriend or an ex-friend that's going to see psychics to put a hex on your life. So you got to wake up. You got to blast gospel music. The devil does not live here in the name of Jesus. You got to be on fire for God. I don't care if you come off looking like a crazy lady. You got to be filled with the Holy Spirit so that nothing can attack you in the name of Jesus. That every enemy that comes against you, they're going to fall. You're going to just look at them like, God, like she don't know that I'm protected. Nobody. And I say that with my chest. Nobody. If you have a real relationship with God, nobody can perform witchcraft on your life and win. They're going to stumble. Okay? But anyways, whew, when, listen, when it comes to God, like I'm just, oh, like. You don't understand if y'all only knew how good God is. Anyways, let's move on to number three. Oh, and by the way, I, I used to love incense. My mother bought me a few incense. One was for peace. One was for money. And they all smell good, right? I think I'm going to put a picture right here. If I, if I, I don't know if I took a picture or not. And um, once someone mentioned on TikTok that incense are, you know, is demonic and it's blind witchcraft, right? Because you're relying on that incense to bring... Um, protection in your house and all you need is God. Once I seen that TikTok of that girl saying that, I threw it away. I threw it away and I said, God, I'm so sorry. I, I just bought the incense because it smelled good and who doesn't want protection in their life? But once I realized that you're hurting God's feelings, he's the only protection you ever need. I threw it away and I never looked back. Now I just have my candles that I light and that's it. And mind you, I love incense. So yeah. So just know that I'm not bashing you or judging you. I was just like you until I was brought to the light. <laughs> Anyways, number three, well, number seven to eight. We did two to six. This is seven to eight. Number one is, I mean, number seven, seven through eight is going to psychics and taking spiritual baths. Now, 
I have a video on my channel and it's still up. You know, I was going to delete it, but no, I want you guys to see how far I came with my um, salvation, with my closeness with God. I was so, I was given bad advice and I didn't even know it. In that video, I did a video on find someone did witchcraft on you or something like that. And in the video, I said that, you know, when, when someone does witchcraft on you, you got to go see a spiritual advisor so they can remove it. Right. But oh my goodness. And some. But someone had to put me on to, girl, no, that is bad advice. The reason why it's bad to go see psychics is because of this, right? If you go to a psychic and say, oh, I don't know what happened. My finances are so bad. I, I you know, I'm, I'm close to eviction. I don't know how I'm going to get money. Please, I need money, da, da, da. So what the psychic is going to do, because let me just say, witchcraft is real. And there are people that can do witchcraft and and um will will really will really increase your wealth right this is how they do it so if you go to a psych let's say i go to a psych and i said i need an increase of money right so what she's gonna do is she's gonna give you a money spiritual bath so she's gonna take leaves florida water whatever they're gonna tell you to undress get naked right you're gonna get naked or whatever and um you're gonna get naked and they're gonna pour they're gonna pour um the little concoction pour it all over you, scrub you with it, right? Or they might um, um, give you a gallon of it. And when you go home, they tell you to, to put it all over your body, right? And you're not supposed to bathe for like three days. And then you're going to see like an increase of money. This is how they get you. So after you do a spiritual bath a month later, you might get unexpected checks, unexpected money. You're like, oh my gosh, like this psychic is the truth. Like, oh my gosh, you're going to, they're going to call you. They're going to call and they're going to say, so how's your money been doing? Girl, I've been making so much money. I, I just got a new job. Thank you so much for the spiritual bath. They're going to go and tell their friends like you guys, y'all got to come to this psychic because I, she just blessed me. Like I took the spiritual bath and money's been flowing. And I'm going to give credit when credit is due, all right? The same way God bless you, so does the devil, right? So, and, and with, like I said, witchcraft is very real. If you go to someone and you say you want money and they're going to give you abundance, but what you don't know and what, what's really demonic about going to see these type of people is that they, this is a business for them, right? This is how they make their money. So yes, they're going to bless your bless you with money, right? But what's going to happen is next, Next thing you know it, you're going to be having health problems. And when they call, they're going to call you and be like, hey, how you doing? Oh, girl, money's going good, but I, I'm having health problems. Oh, come to me. I'm going to make you a, a, another bath for your health to heal you. And then they're going to heal you, right? Then they're going to call you again two months later. How you doing? Hey, well, my health is good. My money is good, but I'm having problems in my marriage. All right, come to me. I'm going to give you um, a spiritual bath to bring you guys closer. And then... It's going gonna, it's gonna to work. You guys are going to come closer. I say all of that to say this. What psychics tend to do, right? Especially psychics that know what they're doing, right? Because they're psychics that know what they're doing. What this is? You're wondering why you have all this bad luck, even though you had like prosperity in one area in your life. Every time you go to these um, um, psychics and they, and they give you a spiritual bath, right? To help you, to help with your life. What they're doing is, they're going to make sure that one area in your life you're thriving and another area in your life is falling so that you can always go to them. And then these people, they charge upwards to $1,000 to $7,000 to $10,000, dollars okay? These, these baths is not cheap. They, they spend, you have to spend so much money, right? And next you know it, your account is going to be depleted and at first, Everything was going good, right? It's almost like selling your soul. It's pretty much like selling your soul. When you sell your, your soul, you always got to, you might prosper in one area and then you somebody might die in your family. And then they might, the, the devil is going to give you something else and then another family is going to die or something else bad is going to happen to you. Like you ever notice that there's, well, I don't even want to get into it with celebrities in the music industry. Like I don't want to, you know, um, accuse anybody of anything. But if you know, you know, people who participate, let me tell you something there and i'm not this is not to bash but when you participate in witchcraft and sorcery everything you ever wanted you're gonna get but you're gonna get at a price a lot of and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna lie i had friends who took me to see psychics because i felt like there was something wrong with me in my life like i needed a bath or something because i felt like i had a lot of bad luck and i noticed when i would go 
and get these baths because everything I'm going to tell you ladies in this video, I say it with so much conviction because I've been there, done that. You don't think I got a spiritual bath? You don't think I went to a spiritual advisor? I spent money, thousands of dollars on spiritual advisors because like I said, they helped me in one area of my life and then I would keep going to them and then I... And then, and then I read a scripture in the Bible. And when I tell you, like, my heart sunk, God says, do not go to anyone. Anyone who practices sorcery or, or engages in witchcraft will not inherit the kingdom. I am your God. Let me help you. Once I realized that, oh, my gosh, I'm... This is not no spiritual bath because a lot of these people, they're going to tell you like, oh, no, this is not witchcraft. Like, I believe in God, too. And, you know, they, before they give you that spiritual bath, they even open the Bible. But if you go to these voodoo stores, the, the Bible is not the same Bible that we're reading. It's 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 um, demonic. OK. It, you guys. I know to people who don't understand witchcraft or people don't, who don't understand spiritual warfare, it's probably going to click off this video and, and call me a crazy lady. I'm trying to explain it to where you guys understand because witchcraft is real and spiritual warfare is real. All, I say all of that to say this. The only spiritual advisor, the only spiritual bath you need, the only cleansing you need for, for, for things, bad things that's happening in your life, all you have to do is cover yourself with the full armor of God. What is that? So let's say your finances, your health, your your your, your kids are not your kids are being disobedient. Everything in your life is, is 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 horrible. Instead of going to the psychic and spiritual bath, this is your spiritual bath. You start off with praying and telling God every area in your life that's just falling apart, right? And after that, I want you to go on a three day fast. Three day fast for me. When I pray to God and I told God, I, I need you and I, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to go to no psychics or nothing. I'm going to go the God route. What you want me to do? Then I, I felt the Holy Spirit tell me, go on a three-day fast. I went on a three-day fast and in my three-day fast, God kept speaking to me. Because you have to understand, when you want to fast, you don't eat or you don't drink, right? This is something I can't explain. You have to experience it. But when you go on a fast, you, you are like... You can hear God clearly. Like I'm like I said before, you have to be spiritual to understand what I'm what I'm saying. Comment below if you understand. But when you don't eat and drink and you just filled with the Holy Spirit and you just praying and you you don't even soak in any type of social media, on on that three day fast, I pray and then while I'm fasting from six AM to four, all I'm consuming is like sermons. So I watch Joyce Meyer, Philip Anthony Mitchell, Mike Todd. I'm just watching that, okay? And while you're watching the sermons, you're going to have little voices in your head. And you're not crazy. You're, it's the Holy Spirit. God is speaking to you. So in my three-day fast, God was telling me, the first day God was telling me, modest clothing, modest clothing, modest clothing. I'm like, what? What? God wanted me to remove all my slutty clothes, all my trashy clothes. And I removed it. God wanted me to start dressing like a real estate agent. <laughs> okay? Like, and I did it. Then God told me to forgive and, and all of that. So once God told me these things during my fast, and now I'm, I'm still doing it to this day. Mind you, this was seven months ago. That was all the spiritual bath I needed. All you need to do is pray fast. And every, every um, and, and that's how you're going to get a spiritual breakthrough. Not a bath, not a psychic. Because with psychics, you're going to you're gonna always need them. Because they're going to purposely do witchcraft that witchcraft on your life to cause problems so that you could always go to them but when you go to god it might take a little longer for you to see all that money it might take you a long a little longer to to, to see your husband and all that to, for god to bless you with your, your your husband your kingdom spouse with god it takes years for you to get what you want but guess what it's gonna last forever i for for so long i, I was born into poverty you know, my mom was a single mom of four kids. I'm a welfare baby. All I knew was the struggle. All I knew was being broke. And but you know what? I never lost my faith in God. And when I was when I started my channel, I said, God, please, I know I can reach. I can have a million subscribers because I just have a healing spirit. I know people will love to. People will love me. And he gave me that. He gave me a YouTube channel. It was growing, but my finances were still bad. At the time, I was only getting paid like, what, $200, $300 a month on YouTube, but I stayed in it. I still went to church. I still prayed. I just, I still was happy, broke or not. I was living with my mom. I was 27 years old, broke, right? And then, boom, 
after seven years of being on YouTube, that's when things started working, you know, working out. And God allowed me to get a house. God allowed me to have, oh my gosh. God allowed me to have financial freedom for the first time in my life. Do you understand how painful it is to always have to worry about money? That's why I said, you know, a lot of people go to witchcraft because you can instantly get that money, but you're going to have to pay the price in so many other ways. But if you just listen to God and just wait on God, you know how many people in the Bible had to wait? Abraham and Sarah, they, they, they had, they conceived their first kid when they were really old, right? Sometimes waiting makes you weary or waiting makes you feel like, oh, God is not going to hear me. I, I need to do something else. I need to, you know what I'm saying? Instead of waiting for your husband, you know, um, you, you just settle for a, a, a good guy, but he's not your kingdom spouse, but you don't want to be lonely and you feel like God is never going to send you your husband. So you just, you know, settle. And then you end up paying the price because now, you know, you're living a life of mediocrity. This is not who you even, who God wanted you to be, but you didn't want to wait. And I'm telling you right now, wait, wait on God. If you wait on God, he's going to give you the desires in your heart. There's a scripture that says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So if you just do God's work, if you live a life of obedience, right? Next, you know it, you're going to wake up one day and like, oh, I prayed for this. It's happening. Oh my gosh. When I was 18 years old, I'm watching all these, all my favorite YouTubers, YouTubers, I'm watching Aaliyah J, Time the Infamous. Um, I, I can't think of them on top of my head, but I'm, I'm looking at all these YouTubers. I'm like, oh my gosh, Lord, I see what you do for other people. Let it happen to me. I know, you know what I'm saying? And then now, now I have just as much subscribe. I have just as much subscribers. Okay. As my favorite YouTubers, like what? Like God, you allow me to like, now they're my like peers. They're like, like when, when I look at my analytics on YouTube and I see who, who my subscribers are watching, they're watching Aaliyah's face. They're watching Aaliyah J. They wa they're watching all these people that I watch. Like what? And then they're watching me. So now God placed me among them as well. Like what? I'm, I was just, a, you know, and I, just a few years ago, I was just a, a waitress struggling to survive. survive. And God said, I'm going to make you, you want that? I'm going to give it to you. But you got you to gotta wait on me, Paige. You going to wait? And I waited. So I'm telling you, just wait. You, you're going to get there. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. I'm telling you. And I feel so bad for like even going to see a psychic, even going to get spiritual baths. Because it's like, you know, I feel like because I, I saw psychics and had those spiritual baths, I feel like those psychics cursed me without even me even knowing. You know what I'm saying? So I'm telling you, stay away from them psychics, wait on God, and he's going to give you the desires of your heart. Don't become weary. Let's move on to, this video is long. Oh my gosh. All right. I know this video is long, but stay with me, guys. You guys are going to really, listen, the next few things, I'm telling you, like, you're going to want to hear it. So number nine is, oh, this is very important. Very important. Get rid of your mattress. Girl, what you mean get rid of, rid of my mattress? What's wrong with my mattress? What is my mattress that I'm sleeping on every night got to do with... How is that going to bring demonic presence in my life? This is why you got to get rid of get, get rid of that mattress. I'm not, Without judgment, close your eyes. And I want you guys to think to yourself right now. How many men you slept with that's been in that same mattress, right? How many relationships did that mattress go through? I know it was not just one. I know it's not just two. And I know that they, they, they wasn't your husband. I know there wasn't your boyfriend. It's it's a few sneaky links. It's a few sneaky links situationships on that mattress, right? You got to throw it out. The reason why I say you got to throw it out is because there's people that... Okay. There's people that carry evil spirits in them, right? There's people that, that you seek with that's carrying the spirit, spirit of perversion, the spirit of lust, the spirit of Jezebel, the spirit of um, um, poverty on them. So let's say you sleep with someone that, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, let's say you you making money and all of this stuff and you sleeping with someone that lacks ambition, that's not working, whatever. You sleep with them, that energy transfer. Next, you know, you walking around. 
looking at your bank account like, what's happening? Listen, evil spirits and demonic spirits transfer from people to people, okay? There's so many of you that it's not even witchcraft that somebody put on you. It's the demon that's attached to you that was transferred towards you when you were intimate with that person, right? You got to break that spiritual soul tie. There's too many soul ties in that bed. You know, and I have two rooms. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to be very honest with you guys, right? I have two rooms. I have, well, on this floor, right? I have uh, uh, my guest room and I have my room, my, my room. My room is not done yet. I literally have an air mattress in that bed because I'm I'm very, it, let me just say, it's. I moved in here two years ago and I just now started getting furniture because I told myself, you know, I don't want to rush my house. I want every room to be beautiful. So right now, um, only the guest room is really done. Um, and I noticed when I sleep in the guest room, I get a lot of nightmares, night, light nightmares, or, you know, I'm like, damn, like, I don't know if I could do this celibate celibacy thing. Like I'm already thinking about breaking my celibacy, all of that. But when I sleep in my other room, which, which I feel like I call my purity room, the room that I'm, I'm going to get, uh, renovated and done. I don't have no nightmares. I don't have thoughts of damn, like <sighs> I miss my old lifestyle. Cause I'm not going to lie. I, do I miss um, going to the club, hookah, drinking, smoking? Well, I don't smoke weed, but like I used to vape. Smoking, um, um, wearing what I want to wear. I don't get those thoughts when I'm sleeping in my other room, but I do get those thoughts when I'm sleeping in my guest room, right? And um, I see all that to say this. You know, I had my relationships. I noticed that, okay, the reason why I'm having these nightmares and all of that, who was on this mattress? Who was on this bed? And then I think about my exes. You know what I'm saying? Because think about cause And don't be like, oh, girl, that's nasty. Um, let, let's all put it out there. Every time you see with somebody, do you throw your matches away to get rid of their, their evil spirit or whatever spirits attached to them? No. People don't. That's the last thing you think about is getting rid of your matches. But I noticed that, oh, no. There's some soul ties still on that bed because there's a, the fact that I'm getting nightmares in this room, the fact that I always crave my old lifestyle only when I'm in that room, it's demonic. And if you don't get rid of that, what's going to happen is you're going to start backsliding and you're going to start, um, you're going to start, um, you, you're going to stop resisting the devil and start falling into temptation. It's very important, you guys, because the devil is very clever. The devil knows that um, you're celibate, so you're, cel you're celibate and you're going to stand on that. Like, it doesn't matter what man comes into your life, you're going to stand on that. But what's going to happen is when you keep sleeping on that same mattress, you go, you're going you're to start feeling weak. You're going to start feeling like you're, you're going to start after a while, like you're not going to stand on business. Whatever you promise God, you're going to start compromising. Okay. You're going to start compromising. I'm telling you. So I see all of that to say this, and I hope I'm explaining it right, but people can't, you don't want all those souls in your bed. Okay. It's, it's going to, it's going to make you like spiritually sick. And if, if, as a child of God, you have to walk in purity. So everything in your home needs to remain pure. So if you had a few bodies on that bed that you slept with, your home is not pure. Okay? I don't care how much you clean it. You got to get rid of it. Once you get um, your new mattress, you're, you're, you're like, I'm telling you, it's going to be like a whole burden lifted off your shoulders. You're going to feel back regular. You're going to feel good. You want your home to be godly. All right? This... you. Your mattress represents your old life. This is not your life anymore. This is not who you are anymore. So get rid of it. And I, I'm finna get rid of mine very soon. I don't even sleep in that bed no more. Every time I sleep in my other room, I, I get I feel so energized to get up, go to the gym. But when I'm in this room, you guys, the room with my blackout curtains, I feel so heavy, drained. Even though I pray, it's like I knew God was telling me, I want to help you, but you got to remove this. This is this. You have a lot of spirits on that bed. You got to let it go. That's why you feeling like that. And once um, someone said this on TikTok as well, that confirmed it for me. That confirmed it. Because when God speaks to me, he speaks three different times. First, I, I hear like a voice in my head telling me what not to do, which is conviction of the Holy Spirit. Then I see somebody talking about it on TikTok. Then I see, uh, I randomly see a scripture saying like, let, let's say like, um, like the, the 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 scripture that I saw about um um upstate like stay away from people who do sorcery da, 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 da. just like I saw that that scripture while I was going through TikTok 
and it made me realize, oh my gosh, like spiritual baths is wrong. Like God always shows me either through people, my mind, whatever he always shows me. So pay attention, y'all. Um, if you want God to also show you what you should be doing next, always pray in the morning, God, whatever you want me, whatever you want me to stop doing, cause stop doing, please reveal it to me on social media. Um, um, reveal it to me in my mind or allow somebody else to tell me and he's going to do it and it's going to freak you out. Okay. Let's move on to number 10. Okay. This goes hand in hand with the psychics and all of that tarot cards and zodiac readings okay the reason why this is demonic like i said before i want you to understand that anything that tries this is why it's demonic right astrology and i love astrology you guys know like i'm always like yeah i'm a cancer i'm a cancer even to this day it's hard like when i see a, a post about cancers i, I kind of want to peep and, and read it and some sometimes i do i'm not gonna lie i'm still growing i'm still trying to unlearn my old behaviors am i gonna sit here and be like oh no i never watch astrology on tiktok i never see those videos i scroll past them i'll be lying to you i can't i i, I can't be fake with y'all i do read my horoscope from time to time and i'm trying to break that habit and i know that the same way god allowed me to break other habits right like I used to overeat a lot and God broke that habit for me. God told me to go on a, I'm going to say that for another video, but let's just say your girl broke that habit. Let's just say your girl's been maintaining. God will, whatever bad habits you have, keep on having them. The closer you get to God, you're going to start hating those things. It's not going to taste the same. Alcohol, not going to taste the same. Um, that McDonald's that you're always eating, not going to taste the same. You're going to crave your own meals. You're going to crave healthy meals. That's how God works in your life. When you live in obedience, when you tell God, listen, listen, I like, I love going to psychics. I love astrology. I love my sage. God, this YouTuber is telling me not to do these things, but I love evil eye bracelets. I love this. God, show me that they're wrong. I don't want her to tell me you show me they're wrong. And then next you know it, you're going to feel a huge conviction come over you. Like, and you're going to be so scared that you're going to, I don't have to tell you the, the Holy Spirit is going to make you throw all those things away, all those tarot cards away. Cause that's what happened to me. Everything that God didn't want me to do, that I I I I I held on to, oh, He made sure I removed it. Anyways, the reason why this is bad is because I want you ladies to understand: anything that tries to take the place of God is witchcraft and is demonic. The problem with tarot cards and astrology and all of this stuff is that because those things are so accurate. Sometimes we tend to obsess over it and believe it over God, right? Because, like, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Comment below if you do this. I'm not going to lie. Like, if I, meet some, if, I, if I meet a guy, the first thing I will tell him is, what's your sign? And if he tell me, like, oh, um, I don't know, I'm a Capricorn or whatever. So I'm, I'm, I'm on Google, like, cancer woman, Capricorn male compatibility. <laughs> Like I'm, I'm reading it. I'm reading it, and I'm like, oh shoot, this is on point. This is exactly how he acts. It's so crazy. Oh, we are meant to be together because this is this is how we vibe. Like just the same way you know Google says about our relationship. That's our yes, we do have a hot and cold relationship. Oh my gosh, like yes, it's demonic. Even though it's accurate. What happens is you're going to obsess over it. So let's say he gets you tight. Then you're going to look up. Why are Capricorns so mean? Why are the Like, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Instead of just, instead of just um, listening to God to just let that man go and stop trying to make it work. Okay. F the compatibility. You know what I'm saying? You, but, but I think with astrology, the people, the reason why people love astrology and psychics is because it's instant gratification. It's like a huge dopamine hit. You know, it's a huge dopamine hit. It's like, ah, oh, it's like, um, you know, you just feel good just knowing, just knowing, just, just knowing what God, he leaves us, he leaves us in the dark. Okay. If you tell God, is this person for me, he's silent, he's silent, but he's not ignoring you. He's, he's working. Right. But with us, 
we, we we're so we live in a generation where you know we we don't want to wait we want instant gratification that's why a lot of people don't turn to christianity don't turn to god because with god he has us waiting we go through trials and tribulations it's not easy being a christian it's not easy walking with god but man it's so worth it for all my ladies who who are who walk with god you know what i'm talking about it's worth it okay but i'm telling you right now you're inviting demonic witchcraft in your life you can't serve two gods. You can't say, you can't be on um, social media looking up your zodiac signs, going to psychics, and then you praying to God and you listen to gospel music. He, he's not happy with you. It's going to hinder your relationship. You got to let go of that. And the only person that's going to give, that's going to um, um, satisfy you should be him. Once he knows that you're the only person that, that can satisfy him, once he knows that you go to the scriptures and you meditate on the word instead of um, um, clinging to alcohol and all these vices that, you know, is going to end up destroying you. Once he sees that, you know, you're, you know, you don't go back to your old lifestyle. Every time you fall short, you just go under him. Your life is going to change for the better. I used to... The minute something's happening to me, I have an argument with somebody, whatever. I'm like, you know what? I'm so stressed out. Let me go on Uber Eats. Let me get Uber Eats and order me a seafood boil. And let me get me a bottle of Teleport. And let me listen to my demonic secular music. And I'm going to feel all good. Does it feel good? Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, it feels good. I'm not going to lie. Sin feels good. But it's going to destroy you in the end. And I noticed when I used to overeat. And I, you know, I, that's because that's how I handle my problems. I'm an emotional eater. Guess what? I'm worse off than I was before. Cause you know what? Now, now I'm just like, I overate this week, this whole week. Now I done gained 10 pounds after losing it. And then now my anxiety is so bad because alcohol and anxiety does not, does not mesh well. So now I'm drinking. I feel good. I'm not thinking about my problems no more. But the next morning I'm riddled with anxiety. I'm shaking numbness. Okay, and, and I'm affecting my health. Be careful. Get them vices under control. Addiction is hard. You can't break it on your own, and God knows that. Give your addiction to God. Give it all. God said, cast your cares onto me so I can take care of you. God is obsessed with taking care of us. But can you let him? Can you let him take care of you, sis? You can't do it on your own. You're going you gonna to drown. You're not going to make it in this life. It's going to be too much for you to bear. Give those bearings to God. That's it. My life is not perfect, but I wake up every morning and I give it to God. I give it to God. And I'm happy. And I want you ladies to have that same happiness. Or guys that's watching this. I want you guys to have the same happiness. Don't do what I do. What, what I did. Because it's gonna leave a, it's gonna lead a life of bad anxiety, mental health issues. When I think about how I used to be, my life last year, I just want to cry and I just want to say thank you guys so much for like taking me out of that. It was scary. Let's move on to. Oh, that was actually that was the last thing. That was the last thing. It was tarot cards. So. Um, this video, I, I didn't mean it for it to go this long, but I told God before I did this video, I don't want to speak to, to my viewers. I want you, whatever you want me to tell them, speak to me through the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit said 38 minutes long, then 38 minutes long is going to be. I hope this video was very useful, useful for you ladies. And once again, this is not to bash or shame anyone that participates in witchcraft and tarot cords or whatever. This is just for my Christian women that want to build a closer relationship to God. And if you want to build a closer relationship to God, you cannot do the things that he hates, that he, that biblically that he says is a no-no. Turn away from that lifestyle. Today, if you have been participating in these things, it doesn't make you a bad person. Get on your knees right after this video. Ask God for forgiveness. Repent of those sins. For those of you who do not know what repent means, it just means whatever things you did, even in your past or now, tell God, confess your sins. Tell God every wrong thing you did and say, I'm sorry. Help lead. I'm new to Christianity. Help me. Help me. And God, and, 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 um, and, um, little by little, you're going to see God working in your life and you're going to, you're going to be somebody's testimony. But, and I know it's a lot to take in. Just take it a day at a time and you'll be okay. Watch a lot of Christian content so you can, you know, build that community. You know what I'm saying? Because like, you're going to need it and you'll be okay. All right. Um, until next time, Bella gang or no gang, I love y'all so much. 
and I, I hope that you understood this video. Like, I, I know it's going to help you because it helped me. Like, my life is so much differently, differently now. Like, I thank God. I'm happy. I'm so happy. And I want you to be happy, too. I love you. Until next time, Bella Gang or No Gang.